Hi, welcome back. This is Jelle, Growing Bonsai. And today we're looking at the Shoyo Maple. Very nice, bright red scarlet growth. Even now, at the end of summer, you can see that the tips of the branches are still bright red. Early this year, I took cuttings. I took air layers. And I thought, let's do a little update. Um, this is one of the air layers I took earlier this year. Take a look down below in the description if you haven't seen the video, but at the time I said I could make a double trunk out of this. It has grown quite well. Um, you can actually see the roots have come out of the pot all over. And I'm thinking taking this out and splitting it up into two. The reason is import from Japan has stalled. There's no more plants coming. It's very hard to get trees. They're getting very expensive. And this species is very desirable. So lots of people around me have asked, do you have cuttings? Can I have one of those air layers? So, I'm going to make more plants. Next to this, in this video, I'm going to take these out of the pot. I'm going to see, have they rooted? I don't see any roots at the bottom yet. And I'm going to pot them up. I have prepared a few pots. I'm using some of the old substrates. Let's dive in. Um, one thing to keep in mind, it is very busy here outside. So I might just shut up for quite a bit of the time and put a bit of background music because my neighbor cutting firewood for winter, you don't want to hear that throughout the video, do you? So I'm going to put this back in the garden. This one as well, not doing any, anything. Take a look, how great is that color? And then I'm taking that one out, that one out, potting them up, showing you the roots, ready for winter. A little recap on how I take these, cut, take these cuttings. In early spring, I took the tips of my Deshoyo maple. Then I dipped them in growing hormone and I put them in almost pure vermiculite. Then I put them in this tiny little greenhouse, basically a Ziploc bag, left that closed, for probably six to eight weeks. And then over summer, I've slowly been opening this up. And in the last couple of weeks, it has been open. Um, rain has started, so it is nice and humid. There's not all that much wind, even though there's a little bit, you can see it in the leaves. Now it is a time that I can take them out of the pot and I can see which ones have rooted, plant them up. I have another four to six weeks until we expect real frost, even though we had a frost warning this week. Yes, now already. But that is enough time for these to establish themselves in a pot. And then by early winter, I know which ones have survived and which ones have not. And by springtime, as it starts growing, it is already in its new substrate. It can start growing straight away from there. Ah, that looks promising. Lots of roots on this side. One, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight rooted the shoyo cuttings. That's excellent. It however means I need to get more pots. I thought it was going to be less. Cuttings like these with only two roots, it is very wise to just remove the active growing tip. This will encourage that one to develop more and maybe we get some roots there as well. Let's take a look at this cutting. Um, as you can see, it's a double trunk already and it has actually roots on all sides of the cutting. I'm going to plant it in a shallow container and put the roots out horizontally. Um, let's see what I can show that here. So I'm going to plant them up with the roots spread out pretty much like this. Of course, nicely radial fashion. If you do it like this, then the roots that will start growing will start thickening and they'll create a nice nabari. This is one that I'm going to keep for myself, develop over the years. And this one the same. If you look at this, this has nice roots all around the trunk.
So remove the old stump, if there's a stump left. As said, it is now fall. And this is a great time for this sort of work because the roots will grow a lot in the last in the last couple of weeks of summer. Well, last couple of weeks of fall, I should say. And therefore the tree can establish themselves before winter really hits. And then in summer it will have a running start. Um, I know this is against convention. I don't care, it works for me. Let's take a look at this air layer, right? This air layer I took in spring and there is another video on how I took this air layer and how I separated it. It is in my successful separation video and I'll provide a link in the description. Um, as you can tell, it has been quite successful. There has been good growth. The leaves have a few burnt tips, but that's to be expected. It's been a hot, dry summer. And now I want to show what this looks like after the growing season has passed. Because some people have put some concern messages that I separate too early. Now, maybe because of that, I should actually change my mind. I should also take this one out of the pot and show you what the nebari looks like, what the roots look like and pot it up. It's not optimal. It doesn't have all the strength to repot. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to do this now. I would recommend for you, maybe wait until springtime. Look at that. Look at how these roots have developed. Um, what you can tell here, there's a very high root here, which I don't really want because I want lower roots, right? So let's take scissors. Here there's scissors. Clip this one off. Um, as hoped for here, there's a root now on this cut area. Look back at the video that I did on separating air layers. Um, I'm going to remove the tall root here as well. And what we are left with is now uh, let's take a look. Um, I cut off a root here, so that I have all the roots in the same plane. There are some roots here on the old stump. I'm going to keep those. So if you plant it up like this, you have a very nice spreading nabari. Trunk coming out of the soil at an angle and a new tip growing out. Naturally, if you are doing this right now in springtime, you would also trim back the long roots here and just work with all the side roots. As it is now fall, I'm not going to. The roots are still quite active. They are establishing themselves for winter. I'm going to put it back in this pot that I originally had. But if you're doing it in spring and you're doing it for yourself, take a shallow container now, plant it up so the roots can grow wide. All done for winter, ready to give to somebody else in spring. So as said, um, you don't need to do this in fall. Actually in spring it's much better to do this, but I really want to show this to you so you can already now see what you can do in springtime. Um, this has grown quite substantially, it has established. Let me remove this wire so it is not connected to the pot anymore. Let's see how these roots have done. So in theory, these pots with lots of holes, they create a lot of air and therefore we should have very nicely refined root ball. And indeed we do have that and there are some good healthy growing tips and you can see it has created a nice dense root ball. And indeed I do have the option to split this one. Let me go and zoom in. Right, so what you see here, just above the split, there's a few roots coming off this side branch here. So I'm going to try and split it right there. And then I have one plant with lots of roots here and another plant with some roots here. Another thing that you might notice is that there's a lot of roots that are actually struggling. There's not a lot of healthy root tips on all these roots. There's just a few lower down, there's a few there. And that's one of the downsides of these pond baskets. They dry out very, very quickly. So you don't pay attention for one or two days and you don't water properly. And you get lots and lots of dead root tips. Naturally, people will say that is the whole intent of these. I don't agree. I don't really like them, so they're not going to go back in the pond basket. I am going to pop them back in a normal pot because I feel that the roots develop more healthily this way. Let me get this clipped. That's not going to work. I was worried about that. So 
So right, this is one of them. This is the cut area and there's a couple of roots. I'm going to plant this deep in a pot. And this is the other one. And it has most of the roots on one side. So I'm going to plop it in a pot like this. Might actually, yeah. Here there's quite a few high roots. I'm going to remove a few of them to make sure that I get as many roots in one plain field as possible. Plant doesn't need all that many roots. And as it is fall now, uh, the plant is actively pushing all the reserves that are in the leaves down into the trunk and also in the root base. Something like this. It will create more roots as the season progresses and by springtime it will have filled the pot. Yeah, ready to go. Now what I've done, I've created, taken a few of these old pots that you get when you buy nursery plants and I have a bit of mesh and I just plop those in there, fill it up with substrate, put the plant in. Easy as that. Doing a lot of replanting at the moment and as you may notice I'm just using the old substrate. Um, I really can't be bothered to get new substrate every single time I pull a cutting or an air layer out of a pot. Important, this one is going to be planted quite deep. It doesn't have a lot of roots and it's going to be somewhere a little bit protected from the wind already now so that it has a good chance of establishing itself. I do apologize about my neighbor who's making all this noise outside. I'm not sure whether you're going to hear it in the movie. I'm not sure whether you're going to hear it in the clip. I hope not and otherwise I said I'll probably put a lot of background music in this video. Right, that one's done. Ready to wait for spring. This one, same story. In fact, trim out some of these dead roots. What did I say? A little bit under a slant, right? If you're doing this at home, consider a shallow container. Put the bread roots out wide so they can grow out instead of down. This is just for one season. It will go to a friend, it will go to somebody who wants it. It might be sold for a couple of bucks in the European bonsai auctions. But then at least, easy to ship, easy to handle. Nothing to be worried about if the pot breaks during transport. Easy as that. This one's done as well. This is what I call propagation success. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven new Deshoyo Japanese maples. Six, seven, eight from cuttings and one, two, three from one air layer. These will go into a sheltered position. I will not expose these to a lot of frost. If we get a lot of frost, they go into a shed. And until then, I will just water them as normal, keep them half sunny, all done.